Welcome to Tupperware Cooking with Chef Mike. Today we're going to be a bit exotic and I'm going to make beef bourguignon. If you've ever made this on your own, you know that it takes a long time. You have to brown the meat, then it takes a long time to simmer on the stove or even in the oven. I'm going to use our Tupperware microwave pressure cooker and shave the time down to almost nothing. So what I have in the pressure cooker is some of the beef that I've already browned. And the browning is important. It, it's an extra step I know, but that browning gives the extra flavor to the meat. And the flour from the browning process also gives a bit of thickening to the sauce when everything is finished. So I have here some chuck roast, boneless chuck, that I cut up myself. Now here's how to save some money. The more hands that touch the food that you buy, the more expensive it's going to be. That's why boneless, skinless chicken breasts cost much more than a whole chicken. I looked at what is called stew beef or beef for stew that's already been cut up. It was $7.99 a pound. This chuck roast was $4.99 a pound. And all I had to do was cut it into pieces myself. I would rather save the $3 and get a better cut of meat. That's my little economics lesson. All right. So in my bowl, I've got some regular all-purpose flour that's been seasoned with a little bit of salt and pepper. And I'm gonna take the beef and just coat it lightly with the flour. And then I'm gonna take some olive oil and add that to my pan, which is already hot. I'm gonna turn that down a little bit. Shake off the extra flour, and then I'm gonna add the meat to the pan. Now, this is the first time that I've had a chance to share with you our fantastic Chef Series 2 cookware. You know, most everything that I do is in the microwave. Well, we are gonna use the microwave today, but I have to say, if you didn't know, Tupperware makes some outstanding cookware. It's nonstick, it's very durable, the best part is, is that it's suitable for any kind of cooking. So whether you have a gas stove, an electric stove, a halogen stove, or even an induction like this, it works on everything. All right, so in the pan, I'm simply gonna brown the beef on the first side. And because this pan was good and hot, this happens pretty quickly, so don't turn your back on it. And I'm not trying to cook the meat, that's very important. I'm only trying to sear the meat and get the browning on the outside. That's to give me the flavor and then the actual cooking is gonna happen in the pressure cooker. And you wanna be careful not to let the heat be too high because you'll burn the olive oil and then it gets kind of acrid. And also the flour will burn and get kind of a bitter taste as well. So just remember, browning, not cooking. The cooking will happen later. The smell is great, the color is great. And remember, we were not trying to cook this meat, we're simply browning it. So now I'm gonna remove the meat and add it to the pre-browned meat that I have already done. Then, I'm gonna put the pan aside for a moment because I'm not done yet. Now I wanna saute some onions and garlic. So I've got my garlic already in the Power Chef and because it's small, it can get lost in a, the whole mix with a big onion. So I'm gonna give it a quick chop and then to that, I'm gonna add one onion that I've already quartered. I'm gonna turn my burner back on in a second. That's one thing I like about induction is that it's, it's instant on and it's instant off. There we go. Okay, so let me turn my burner back on. And I've got all these wonderful pan juices from the browning process, so I don't wanna lose that. That's all flavor, and I paid for that flavor. So I'm gonna add a little bit more oil, and then I'm gonna add my onions and garlic. Yep, pan's nice and hot. And again, I'm not aiming to cook these, I'm just trying to get them a little bit soft, take advantage of all that flavor that's been left behind by the beef. Because you know me, I don't like to waste flavor. And when you're sauteing onions, if you salt them first, 
it will help them give off more liquid and they'll brown faster. You don't need a lot of salt, but that really does help the browning process. So I'm just gonna stir this around. And by the way, our silicone spatulas can take this heat. They're good up to 375 degrees, so I'm not gonna melt this into my onions. Just get those started. And while they're sauteing, another hallmark of beef bourguignon is mushrooms. And so I'm using quartered mushrooms. And I could have bought regular white button mushrooms, but you know me, Mr. Flavor, I like the baby portobello mushrooms because they got more flavor. And I've already quartered most of these. So all you need to do is just trim the ends off and then quarter them. Not complicated cooking here. Oh, got one that was hiding out. Okay. And I'm gonna put these back and then as soon as the onions and garlic have browned just a little bit more, I'm gonna add my mushrooms. Now the mushrooms give off a lot of liquid too. So that's another reason why I want to sort of pre-saute them. Okay, as you see, this is getting some nice color. So now I'm gonna add my mushrooms. And these will take a few minutes. Now I've already got salt in here from the onions and the mushrooms enjoy the salt too. That helps them brown and release some of that liquid. So we'll just let these sort of take a toss around in the pan. And I'll get ready for the next step so that we can put all of this together. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of flour to this mixture because I want to cook the flour. I don't want it to have that raw pasty taste and by adding it to the sauteing vegetables, it does two things. One, it cooks the flour, but then that flour is gonna act as a thickening agent. And it will make the final sauce with all the beef broth and the red wine even better. I'm gonna turn the heat up on this a little bit. I'm impatient. I just have to keep an eye on it because I don't wanna burn these onions. And I think it could do with a little bit more oil A little bit is a relative term. Okay. Now I have a confession to make. Technically, because of the Tupperware microwave pressure cooker, I could have avoided everything we've done up to this point and just dumped everything in the pressure cooker and cooked it. And it would work. And I have done it. But I promise you, the flavor is like day and night difference. It's worth the extra little bit of trouble. So in this case, do as I do and as I say. Because it hasn't taken that long. Okay, so I'm now going to add our cooked vegetables. I should say sauteed vegetables, they're not fully cooked, to the pressure cooker. Got very quiet in here because there's no more saute noise. All right, so I've got that in there. Now to this, I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of tomato paste. A bit good reflexes. All right, tomato sauce and tomato paste are trying to escape on me today. And then I've got two cups of beef broth. So don't worry about that big lump of tomato paste because it will get dissolved. Then a cup of burgundy wine. And if you can't find burgundy, I follow Julia Child's rule. If you couldn't drink it, then you sure shouldn't cook with it and don't ever buy cooking wine, that is nasty stuff that's full of salt and all kinds of who knows what chemicals. So if you wouldn't drink the wine, don't cook with it. I'm actually using a really nice Pinot Noir and that is gonna give this an amazing flavor. Two more ingredients. I need some pearl onions. I'm lazy, I mean, you can buy fresh pearl onions. I am not gonna sit there and have to peel this many little teeny tiny onions because my life is 
just too short for that kind of stuff. I buy them frozen. And if it's good enough for me, it's good enough for you. Last thing I'm gonna do is add four or five sprigs of fresh thyme. If you don't have fresh, you could use dried. Just remember though that dry spices and herbs are a lot more powerful than their fresh counterparts, so don't overdo it. All right, we're done. I'm gonna add just a little bit of pepper and maybe a little bit more salt. I can always add more salt later. And now we're gonna seal it up. Now remember with the pressure cooker, we have the arrow on the cover and a matching arrow on the base. So simply line up your arrows, clockwise turn, lock and load, and now we're ready to go in the microwave for 30 minutes at full power. Okay, our beef is just about finished. Funny how that works, isn't it? Notice the handles are cool to the touch. And also notice that the pressure indicator valve is up. That means that this is fully pressurized and I can't open it. So I need to let this rest maybe 15 minutes or so until that indicator drops down. Then it will be safe to open and we can move forward. Okay, I don't know about you, but I need to have some noodles to go with my beef bourguignon. And so I'm gonna use our Tupperware microwave pasta maker. Yes, we do have a pasta maker and you can cook pasta in the microwave and not even have to worry about water boiling. So in one of my modular made containers to keep my pasta fresh, I've got some dry egg noodles. And I love this pasta maker because depending upon how many servings you need, it's already calibrated inside. I need a lot. So I'm gonna go on the side for multiple servings and I'm gonna say maybe eight. So what it does is the indicator tells you at what level to fill with dry pasta. This is me, remember. Okay, then I'm gonna add a little bit of salt because with the, the pasta maker, you should always salt the pasta first. The same way most people salt their pasta water when they're boiling it. The beauty is I don't have to wait 20 minutes for a big old pot of water to stop boiling and heat up my kitchen. All right, then I just add water because there's a fill line for that. Let's see if I estimated right on my water. I did. Okay, I'm just gonna give this a quick stir to dissolve the salt. Now, you saw that I had a cover with this. You do not cook the pasta covered. If you do, you're gonna have a massive, messy boil over in the microwave. So we're gonna cook this for 15 minutes at full power without a cover, and I'll show you what the cover's for when we're done. Okay, the microwave beat me to it this time. So our pasta is ready. Oh, yes it is. And as you can see, my noodles are done. They're nice and tender, but they're not overcooked. But there's a lot of water that I don't need. So now is when we use the cover. Now if you look on the front of the pasta maker, there are little holes there. I wonder what they're for. If you look at the cover, it's got a notch here in the front. If you don't know which is which, the arrow points you in the right direction. So now I'm gonna take the notched end with the arrow and cool to the touch. And I'm gonna actually drain the pasta. How cool is that? I'm not having to lift a big old heavy pot. I'm not getting a face full of steam. I'm not having to use pot holders. And I wanna get all the water out of these noodles. Okay, now, the cover does other tricks too, watch this. So now I've got my drained noodles. Everything is better with butter, as far as my life is concerned. So I'm gonna add this butter. Now, we had the notch to allow the pasta to drain before, right? If we reverse it, it's closed, but I put it back the same way. Now this is sealed and this will keep the pasta warm for a long time. And I'm just gonna shake that butter up in those hot noodles to let the butter melt. 
and we'll just let that sit aside for the time being. Now let's move on to the beef. Notice that the pressure indicator valve is down so it's safe to open and we're all going to get the big reveal together. Ready? Lift the locking handle, give it a counterclockwise turn. Here we go. Always open it away from yourself so you don't get a steam facial. As you see, it's still very, very hot. Now let's take a look in here and see what we got. Oh my goodness. Yep. The beef is nice and tender. The sauce has thickened. Mushrooms are cooked. So we're ready to go. So I'm gonna give this pasta one more shake just to get that butter coating the noodles. Get my serving plate. And take some of my nice buttery noodles and put that on the plate. And now I'm gonna take a ladle with some of my beef. Put that right over the top. Oh, look at that. Get another mushroom or two. Oh gee, another piece of beef snuck in there. I hate when that happens. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna do is take some fresh thyme and just strip the leaves off. Give that a little bit of a garnish. Maybe a little bit of salt. Maybe a little bit of pepper. And we have beef bourguignon. 30 minutes, absolutely delicious. As I said, you don't have to do that browning step. You could have just dumped everything in the pressure cooker and it would have been delicious, but it's so much more delicious when you take that extra step. Thanks for watching and remember, you don't have to be a chef to cook like one with Tupperware.